Well, welcome to Lanx TV's preview show for the Vitality Blast T20. It's going to be a fascinating season and it all starts on Friday night under the lights against Yorkshire. I don't know how they do the draw for these uh, competitions, but that one certainly came out the right way, didn't it? For all you Lancashire fans looking forward uh, to a Roses match to start things. We've got a lot to look forward to over the next 10 minutes or so. Be looking forward to the 2022 season in the company of Warren Hegg, who, as we celebrate the 20th season of the Vitality Blast, um, we remember all the way back in the first season when you were there with your gloves behind the stumps wondering what on earth this revolution in cricket was, eh? <laughs> Very much so. And yeah, it's, it's great to be here. You and, and yeah, it seems 20 years ago since the uh, since then that first T20 match. Great crowds, great atmosphere. Wondering what a good game this is. What a fun game it is. It's over in over in a couple of hours. Everyone has some good fun as a result at the end of it. Did you ever think that T20 would become such an extraordinary cornerstone? to an English domestic season? You know what, no, I prob probably no was the, uh, the answer to that question. It was, it was a game that was, had been played for a, a long time in the local leagues, 20 overs on a, on a Wednesday night, and to bring it to the home of Lancashire cricket, to Emirates Old Trafford, in front of full houses, uh, was unbelievable. And it was a bit of a gimmick at first, but no, I didn't think that any player who played in that era would see it being the game that it is now. Were you any good? We were pretty good. Yeah, we were pretty good. <laughs> You've got to remember as well that, that a lot of the side when I played during the end of that, my career was had, had been brought up on on the shorter format of the game, the, the, the 20 overs, 20 over slog it was. A lot of junior cricket was played there. So it, it was a game that was uh, not, not too different from what we'd been brought up on. So it was, uh, yeah, we were pretty good at it. You'll notice he uh, dodged the question because I meant him, but actually he's not going to ask about him personally, but he will answer about the team. Uh, well, if you're a little bit unfamiliar with T20 cricket, if you are one of those people like Warren, who's a little bit older perhaps, or even so young that it's new to you, uh, let's explain a little bit more about what T20 cricket brings. The Vitality Blast is England's county T20 cricket competition, which sees all 18 teams battle it out over the course of the summer. T20 is the shortest form of limited overs county cricket. It involves two teams, each with a single innings. The key feature of T20 is that each team bats for a maximum of 20 overs. That's 120 legal deliveries. Whoever scores the most runs, wins. All counties are split into two regionalised groups of nine. Lancashire Lightning will play in the North Group, with five of their seven home matches here at Emirates Old Trafford. T20 cricket is synonymous with big sixes, fast run rates and fun for the whole family. We can't wait to see you at Emirates Old Trafford this summer. Yes, indeed, so much to look forward to over the course of the next six weeks, particularly here at Warren at Emirates Old Trafford, starting with the Roses match. But there is always an expectation, isn't there, from the crowd that come here, but just generally speaking about Lancashire with the resources they have, the star names as well, that they'll do well. Last year to the quarterfinals, that's a bit of a disappointment. Such are those high expectations. Expectations of the Lancashire fans, the Lancashire members, and anyone who likes cricket in and around the area expect Lancashire to do well. And the T20 Blast is no exception, Hugh. You know, they come here to see their team win. The dynamic, the loud, the, they want the team to win. They get behind everyone, even when things aren't going too, too well. So, yeah, they'll be looking to see some serious cricket. And to get to finals day, always uh, that expectation level that I think that they'll want to meet with some homegrown players. We've seen Matty Parkinson and so many others. Stephen Croft, who we'll be talking to uh, shortly, do so well uh, over the years but also a little bit of stardust from overseas sprinkled in there as well. Yeah, we've always had stardust, haven't we? We've always had that, that, that overseas player that comes in and gives everyone a bit of a lift. This year, we've got Tim David. He's a star of franchise T20 cricket. He's been in the IPL. He's been in, in the Big Bash. And now he's coming over here to grace the, to grace the, the, the Lightning's badge, really, and to, to put on a show. He's, he's strong. He's big. He's dynamic. He hits it out the ground. He bowls quick. He's a great fielder. He's the typical kind of cricketer that, that, that our, our our fans and our members want to see. And domestic talent too, of course. Not forgetting Phil Salt will be appearing in red for Lancashire in the Blast uh, for the first time in England International. A wicketkeeper too, apparently, according to Warren Hegg, quite a good one. And we know this because Cricket Kid has been to meet him. What's up everybody, I'm Jackson, also known as the Cricket Kid from Instagram and I'm here to talk all things T20 with the one and only Phil Salt. Do 
joined by Salty here. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, very well, mate. How are you? Pretty good, yeah, yeah. What is the best thing about the T20? Well, I, I hope the best thing about the T20 is going to be the fans here on, uh, on Friday night. I'm really looking forward to that game. Um, but to be honest, it's my favourite format. Right, on to some like dressing room questions now. Who has got the worst banter? I'm going to have to say Parky. <laughs> Does not stop talking. Doesn't Honestly, it? mate, it's like a radio. He just goes and goes and goes. Who is the worst in the oldies versus youngies football match before the game? Oh, brilliant. Uh, the worst is Parky. Um, <laughs> he really gives himself a big up, but he's awful. <laughs> oh, God. I'm pretty sure out of the first six games of the season, he's not touched the ball with his foot once. It's all with his shin. Um, and then in the oldies is Wellesley. Who has got the worst taste of music in the dressing room? And what are they listening to as well? Oh. I couldn't tell you what they're listening to, but it's Woody. It's banned from the speakers now at this point. Oh, God. Um, I think it's Drill he listens to. Oh. But it's awful. Ooh. Absolutely awful. Do you know what that is? Um, Drill music. Is it like a bit like upbeat, like hard? Yeah, it's like, yeah. Grime, it's like grime sort of. <laughs> like, no, not yeah. very good at all. No. How much are you um, looking forward to like your first game? Like, and what have the lads been like telling you about it? Yeah, the boys have all said it's a it's a great occasion, the Roses game. Um, to be honest, mate, I've tried not to think about it too much. Um, you know, try and approach every game sort of the same as the last. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, but I am. You know, I do have that little bit of me that's really looking forward to Friday night. And yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we get a good start. I am as well. Yeah, you very lucky. Uh, well, I wish I could be, but I've got a match myself. But when I get home, I'll be watching it on the TV for the Good lad. Who was it that inspired you to like become a cricketer or a wicketkeeper? I've always looked up to Matt Pryor. Yeah. Um, you know, similar to yourself, Sarah Taylor. You know, is one that she, I do talk to a lot about keeping. And she, you know, she is right up there with the very best in the world, um, keeping wise. But I think for me, Matt Pryor, you know, is the best keeper batter in the world for four yeah. years. Um, you know, across all formats. Um, so he, he's the one I've really looked at, tried to sort of shape myself around in my career. Right. So last question, and it's the most important. What do you prefer, Yorkshire pudding or a Lancashire hot pot? Lancashire hot pot. That is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that salty, absolutely buzzing for the T20 on Friday. Can't wait to see you there. Cheers, mate. So we all know a little bit more about wicket keeping courtesy of both Cricket Kid and Phil Salt. Uh, we would spend more time talking about wicket keeping, uh, Warren, with you, but I think we're now pretty up to speed. So perhaps let's talk about what Phil Salt will offer with the bat. And here's an, one of a number of players at the top of, in the middle of the order for Lancashire Lightning, who could be peppering a building site, a hospitality area, the pavilion, maybe even here in the studio with some big hits. Joss Butler's coming back from the IPL, Liam Livingston as well, along with the likes of Phil Salt. We could hear and see some crashes of some windows over the course of the next few weeks. Absolutely, yeah. we're blessed, aren't we? That top order is blessed. You, you talked about probably the best uh, T20 uh, batsman in the world in Joss Butler. You've got Liam Livingston coming off the back of a fantastic IPL. Uh, you've got Phil Salt, who's, who's a great player, who's proven at this level. And of course, Tim David, who can lose the ball on any day. And not forgetting the likes of Stephen Croft. What a, a career it has been for the Lancashire Lightning stalwart. More than 200 games in his T20 career. Uh, he's looking forward to another season. Croft, it's a cracking way to start, isn't it? With a, a Roses pitch from Friday. Yeah, really exciting uh, to get, that, get it out of the way and have it, have it first. Uh, really exciting at home as well. Uh, so, yeah, we're all raring to go. Had a good week's training. Uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. Except he's his season number 20, because it's the 20th year of the blast, but you, you missed the first one, didn't you? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't play in the, in the first edition. And uh, yeah, it's, it's changed from, from then, obviously. I think back then when it started, no one knew how long it was going to be around for, if it was here to stay, but it's obviously gone from strength to strength. And yeah, it's a, just a part of the, the cricketing calendar now. Uh, how pleased are you that you are, you're still involved in this? I mean, it's a fair effort, isn't it? You know, 19 years on, still be, still be going. Yeah, yeah, it's something. I still think I'm, I'm one of the youngsters, to be fair. Uh, I still feel feel quite young and, and, and 
and diving around a bit. But yeah, it, I feel incredibly lucky to, to play uh, such an extended part. Uh, well, to, to have an extended career, really. Uh, enjoyed every bit and hopefully got some, some more to offer. But it, it has flown by and I've enjoyed every minute. How much has your T20 game changed, Stephen, over these 20 years? Yeah, very much so. Obviously, my roles changed as well from being a sort of uh, a, an all round your ball seam to, to spin and uh, been up and down the order, open the bowling, bowling seam, open bowling spin. Uh, so, yeah, it's changed dramatically and, and, and sometimes from, from game to game as well, my role changes. So, yeah, happy to, to fit in wherever I can really and, and hopefully contribute to, to some wins and ultimately a trophy. Stephen Croft, like so many, looking forward to the beginning of the campaign, Warren, against Yorkshire. I mentioned earlier, this is a, a, a perfect way to start. And not often it does start with the Roses game. It's often buried in the middle there, a peak, if you like, of the season. Uh, but there are the home games, including the two uh, at Blackpool. And to start with a Roses game whets the appetite to a certain degree, does it not? Well, the form book goes out the window, doesn't it? It's, it's a local derby, the, the War of the Roses, Lancashire versus our, our greatest enemy in Yorkshire. Full house, it'll be exciting, it'll be loud. It doesn't matter what the weather's doing. The pitch, it'll be ferocious on the pitch. It'll be ferocious by the fans watching. Um, yeah, I can't wait. And the North Group has, has all, always provided um, the kind of uh, opposition for Lancashire Lightning that changes. You're never quite sure who's going to be competing. Now, you do know that the Lightning are going to be there or thereabouts, but the teams that often populate that top four that go through to the quarterfinals, it could be any number of these. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You just look at North Ant Steelbacks there, Friday the 3rd of June. They're a team that have been, you know, historically very successful in the T20 Blast. They're a real danger side, the, the Knots Outlaws, who we play at Blackpool this year. And of course, we, we, we finish with a Birmingham Bears on a, a Sunday the 3rd of July. So some, some fantastic fixtures to, to look forward to there. And it's going to be a really tough group to, uh, to get out of this year. Always finishes with Birmingham Bears. I don't know how that works. It doesn't often start with the Yorkshire. Often finishes uh, with Birmingham. So much to look forward to. And some of the players uh, that you'll be seeing, not only on Lanx TV, but if you come at Emirates Old Trafford and indeed at Blackpool, uh, will be uh, maybe particularly unfamiliar to you until we find out more about them from Josh Bohannon and Matt Parkinson. How well do you know your squad? We'll ask you a series of questions. If your answers match, you score a point. If they don't, you get nothing. Write your answers down, no come forward. I think we're going to score really badly on this. You ready? Oh no, I knew I should have done that. I think Hurt is good, he wears like yeah, muscle no, tees. I, I couldn't think. Blabber's dress is like a boy band man. Oh no! No! <laughs> Let me breathe on you. Yeah. We're gonna score none. Yeah. Yeah, I changed. Yeah. yeah. Point. He thought a plane could glide with no petrol for 500 miles. Thought so he could like get up and then just fly. Yeah. Yes. yes. He's a tank. <laughs> Easy. Yes! <laughs> Half volley merchant. Half volley, man. volley merchant. Best gear ever. Yeah, yeah we need a few more questions, I reckon, and then we'd have got, oh, we've got them all right, I reckon. <laughs> So, you know the players, you know the format, uh, you've certainly got a sense of anticipation about the games that have come as well. This is going to be a fascinating Vitality Blast T20 uh, season, I think, Warren. And we've spoken about expectations already, and I think it's just worth putting into perspective that that group of players, those star names, this ground, the crowd as well. This, I think, answers the question that we started uh, with at the beginning of the programme, which is to say, that's why T20 matters so much. Absolutely matters. Such an exciting period of the, of the British summer, isn't it? And, and like you say, Glenn Chappell's squad there, he's got strength in his batting all the way down. He's got experience in the bowlers. His fielding uh, side is very dynamic. He's very athletic. So he'll be looking to get runs on the board early trying to squeeze them using his experience of the likes of Stephen Croft that we've mentioned, Dame Villas, who's a very experienced captain in the, uh, in the T20 format, uh, and looking to, to make 
Emirates Old Trafford, a bit of a fortress like it is most years uh, and to try and win as many games as possible from the outset. Yeah, the home record is always so imperious, isn't it? Uh, Warren will be here over the course of the next few weeks as we look forward to, to those games, if only to work on his tan. And we can't necessarily guarantee the weather uh, here in Manchester, but we can guarantee that Warren will be part of our coverage on Lanx TV. So thanks very much indeed. We hope your uh, appetite has been whetted to the uh, extent that it has here in the studio. Enjoy your summer and may there be plenty of big sixes in it. We'll see you soon.